Father James Guadalupe Carney had worked in Honduras for 18 years. His defense of human rights and his support of farmers' organizing efforts resulted in his deportation in 1979. After working as a pastor in Nicaragua, he returned to Honduras in 1983 as a chaplain to an armed revolutionary column. The group was captured by the Honduran army and Father Carney was disappeared. Although officials presented his chalice and stole to his relatives, they never explained the circumstances of his death, suggesting only that he probably starved to death in the mountains. On September 22, 1983, the Chicago Tribune reported from Honduras, quote, U.S. troops on maneuvers here assisted Honduran army combat operations against the leftist guerrilla unit operating near the Nicaraguan border, U.S. sources said Wednesday. The article continued, U.S. Army helicopter pilots flew Honduran troops from Puerto Lempira on the Atlantic coast into action near the town of Nueva Palestina, in southeastern Olancho province on September 9th, the sources said. One source said five American UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters were used to ferry a special Honduran counterinsurgency platoon to hunt down a guerrilla band that allegedly was trained in Nicaragua and Cuba. U.S. officials also shared intelligence information about the guerrilla's movements with their Honduran counterparts and helped plan the Honduran military response, U.S. sources said. Twenty guerrillas were reported killed in the ensuing operation, the latest two on Tuesday, according to Honduran army communiques. In Washington, the White House and the Pentagon confirmed Wednesday that U.S. army helicopters were used to conduct long-range training exercises with the Honduran 5th Battalion as part of the combined U.S.-Honduran military exercises. More than 3,200 U.S. troops are here for combined maneuvers with Honduran forces. The maneuvers, scheduled to run until at least March, will involve more than 5,000 troops at their height. The Central Intelligence Agency acknowledged for the first time publicly yesterday that an American Catholic priest may have been murdered in 1983 by the Honduran military, which was strongly backed at the time by the U.S. One possibility acknowledged by the CIA yesterday was that the Reverend James Carney may have been thrown from a flying helicopter. The agency declassified 36 documents yesterday involving the disappearance of Carney who, after years of ministering to Honduras's poor, joined the leftist insurgents. In past communications with Carney's family, the CIA offered only one scenario for his disappearance, the official Honduran government explanation that he had died from severe malnutrition while accompanying a guerrilla incursion into Honduras from neighboring Nicaragua. Yesterday, however, the CIA said other explanations had turned up in a review of agency documents. Carney may have been captured and killed by the Honduran military. This cannot be ruled out, given recent reporting, which indicates Honduran military units captured and executed a number of insurgents, according to the agency's summary of its documents. According to one account provided by a former sergeant in the Honduran military, Carney may have died after being thrown from a helicopter. I worked as a priest worker among the banana workers in Colombia. I earned 13 pesos a day, about $1.30 U.S., and had to pay 10 pesos a day for food, 
for me alone. How does one of these workers feed his woman and five to ten kids? The owner was rich, a congressman, and he was trying to squelch the labor union. He called me and all those who helped the labor unions communist sympathizers. And he went to mass every Sunday and had his daughters in the nuns' rich convent school. It is Catholics like him who are the cause of communism. Jesus said, As long as you didn't do it to one of these least brothers and sisters, you didn't do it to me. Depart from me, ye cursed. You robbed me of food and a decent home for my family and a chance to give an education to my children, says Jesus. In an article in the Honduran daily La Tribuna on January the 20th, 2002, Lucas Aguilera of the Christian Democrat Party stated that he saw Father Carney alive in a military jail in Nueva Palestina in 1983 after Father Carney had been captured. I saw the priest, Aguilera said, so they can't tell me stories about his death by starvation. They captured him and later they killed him. Colonel Herminio Velázquez and the government of Roberto Suazo Córdoba know exactly what happened. The Honduran military has denied ever capturing Father Carney. In protest against these inadequate responses by the U.S. government, the friends and relatives of Father Carney, along with COFADE, Committee of Relatives of the Detained Disappeared of Honduras, held a massive demonstration in front of the U.S. Embassy in Tegucigalpa on May 26, 1998, demanding a complete declassification of U.S. government documents concerning Father Carney and the other 184 disappeared persons in Honduras. The horrible injustices in the world are the greatest sins of today and of these past centuries. God gave the riches of the world for all people, and there are enough riches in the world for all, but they are so unjustly distributed, as the popes have said, that now there is a small class of those who control and use the riches of the world, while the great mass of people live in poverty and misery.
we need a revolution in the world. The popes have said it. We must remake the social order, they say, which basically would mean that by peaceful revolution, by laws, and by the rich sacrificing their superfluous possessions, by the rich nations helping the poorer ones, we have to bring about a more just distribution of the riches of the world. And this isn't in charity. This is strict social justice, which is a sin to neglect doing. And that doesn't mean that just the members of government have this duty to change the very social structures of the world. The popes have all said that under social justice, all men and women have the duty to do all they can to bring about this reconstruction of the social order so that justice and charity reign in the world and not injustice and class hatred and race hatred and international hatred. I come in the name of my sister Eileen, her husband Joe Conley, my sister Virginia Smith, my sister Maureen Carney, and my wife Barbara. We are all frustrated by the scarcity of assistance from agencies of the U United States government, especially the CIA and the Department of Defense. Since the demonstrations of October of last year, 1997, 
at the United States Embassy here in Tegucigalpa, we, the relatives of Father Carney, have spent so much time making phone calls, writing letters, sending emails and faxes, trying to get official help for our efforts to penetrate the veil of secrecy which hides with impunity page after page of deleted information. What do we demand? Justice. Father Carney died reportedly on September 15th, 1983. To sum up, I have no results of my efforts, nothing. Mr. President Clinton, I am frustrated and angry. In spite of all that, I want to state that I am very encouraged to be part of these events in Honduras. Our family continues to be in solidarity with the untiring search for truth and justice as we have shown here today. We're up here on the top floor of Copadia, the third floor up, really high up, and these are the pictures of many of the disappeared. Uh, there's so many of them, as you can see. And this is usually where Guadalupe goes, but... Oh, you know, usually Guadalupe is here, but we're borrow, we borrow this picture to uh, show you how we were going around the place here. Get that uh, the one up close there, Padre Guadalupe. It's, uh, it's not showing up too well on here. But I'm going to, when I uh, uh, turn that picture off, I'm going to take a shot of all the silhouettes that we have around here, which, as Joe has just explained, uh, is a very impressive way to express what's happened to the, the disappeared. We don't know what's happened to them. In other words, they are shadows in the past that we want to bring to light. We want to put faces on them. John Patrick Carney recalled a vigil and fast in which he had participated seven months earlier at the same U.S. Embassy. That's where we sat for a whole day uh, back in uh, late October last year. Father Carney's autobiography, To Be a Revolutionary, was published by HarperCollins in 1985.